This is Nathan from RunDreamAchieve.com. Today's topic, we're going to be going over how to improve mental toughness in running. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off and get lost. All right, so the question of how to improve mental toughness in running is uh, very, very important. I got this question from Corey Crouch. Uh, kudos to you, man, for, for sticking with it with your workouts. Um, his question was, can you make a video about training racing mindset? I, if I have a longer workout, I often get nervous and doubt my ability to accomplish the workout. Before I started running again, I was used to doing shorter reps or very short interval sessions. Longer intervals like mile repeats or progression tempos uh, can seem daunting. It always goes okay on paper, but they can be mentally tough. I find that I'm slowly feeling better now, deeper into those workouts, and I'm able to calm my mind. That's great to hear, uh, Corey, for sure. Again, it, it, it takes time, but the body always adapts. I always talk about this, but it's tough because you, you, you want to see quick results, but it, it will eventually get easier for you. So he says, I find that I'm slowly feeling better now, deeper into those workouts, and I'm able to calm my mind. I'm assuming these longer workouts are allowing my body to adapt, but I think there's some psycho psychology to it as well. Just wondering if there are things we can do mentally to get the best out of ourselves. Okay, great question, Corey. Uh, the types of things that I would, I always did over the years, uh, even when I, you know, wasn't at that quite at the level I was dreaming about. Um, you know, like I said, I, if you've watched my videos long enough, I always talk about I, my goal was always to break a 222 marathon. Back in 2007, that was a USA Olympic Trials uh, B standard time. I eventually went under 220 and broke the A standard time. And the stuff, the, the things that I used to help myself get through those really tough days was you know, writing down my goals. Uh, it's easier, you know, it's a very simple process, but actually instead of just thinking about a, a race time you're going for or, you know, trying to qualify for the Boston Marathon or, or trying to lose weight, start writing down what you actually want to do. Um, and, and seeing yourself, not, not only just doing the mental training, but actually writing down and holding yourself accountable. Write those goals down, post them, you know, on your on your mirror in your bathroom. Um, write them down so you can actually carry them around in your in your wallet, or you know, if you're female, in your purse. Pull it out and actually see those goals that you're you're committing to. Um, some of the other things that that help me get over, you know, or help me get uh, beyond the, the stress of knowing that I had to do a tempo, a hard tempo run, uh, maybe by myself, or um, just the types of goals I was setting for myself is I would watch any type of documentary that had to do with athletes or anybody that was successful. I studied what successful people do. And I think it's very important to, to mimic, I mean, be yourself, but mimic what these athletes are doing and what these individuals are doing. Um, people that do things great or at a very high level do it because they do it consistently over and over and over again. You know, I see a lot of people that, that say, well, I'm an introvert and I don't like public speaking. I'm an introvert too. And you know, it took me years to start doing videos. You know, I, I would write blog posts over and over again. You know, I can write forever, but it takes, it takes you have to get out of your comfort zone to, to make videos and to talk into a video. And I don't know why, but now, I mean, it's, it's very easy to do it. Um, but like I said, doing things repetitively over and over again, you gradually become more confident in what you're doing. Not to say you're not confident, obviously you are, um, otherwise you wouldn't even be here. But the fact that you're seeking excellence, you're asking questions like this tells me that your running is gonna go, is gonna skyrocket in 2022 into the future. You, you're looking at things that top level athletes are focused on. They wanna be more mentally tough, they want to get, you know, how they want to minimize the amount of stress load they're placing on themselves, because again, you're, when you're doing tempo runs and you're doing the, you know, the shorter reps, um, in the very short interval intervals you talk about, they're over quicker, so it's not as mentally taxing on. But to do tempo runs or to do repeat miles on the track by yourself at a very fast pace or um, jumping into a race and maybe you're the fastest guy or gal in the race and you know right off the bat that you're gonna have to lead that race and you're gonna have to 
push the pace immediately from the, from the start. That takes a different mentality. Again, another tactic that I, would, I want you all to think about, Corey, as well as any other athletes that's kind of feeling stressed out about doing mile repeats or progression tempos that, that Corey talks about here in this, in this question, always focus on being as relaxed as you possibly can. If you look at the best middle to long distance runners, you know, if you know about Ilya Kipchoge, the world record holder for the marathon, look at how relaxed he is before he, ra before he races. You know, even in training, I've watched his training workouts. You know, he's very relaxed, he's smiling, but he's very focused when he's doing, obviously when he's running. Relaxation is key. If you look at the best sprinters, the best middle to long distance runners, they always look relaxed when they're racing. Their facial, you always watch their facial muscles. A lot of times they're very uh, relaxed. They're not tense. You know, sometimes they are, but maintaining focus, maintaining relaxation while you're doing these shorter and especially the longer types of workouts that you're talking about, Corey, that is that is really key because, again, you want to minimize any amount of um, stress that you're placing on yourself. It's already stressful enough to do a tempo run, a longer tempo run, whether you're with a group or preferably if you're with a group, it's going to be somewhat easier for you. But if you're by yourself, relaxation is, is very, very key. Um, and, and just know that it's just running, okay? It's okay to have a little bit of nerves when you're starting a workout, um, you know, but this this question, you know, can you make a video about training racing mindset, you know, how to improve mental toughness in running um, takes time. You have to continue to develop and continue to work hard over a long period of time. And the most successful athletes, they just do not know how to quit, okay? Uh, I had the mindset of I'm gonna, get the most out of my body. I'm going to continue to put in the work no matter how long it takes. Um, you know, I started running when I was 15 years old. I ran my personal best of 219.35 for the marathon when I was 31 years old um, and even ran a 232 marathon when I was 37. I'm 45 now and I'm actually considering going back out and trying to run, uh, you know, a goal of getting under two hours and 25 minutes. It's going to be very hard for me at, at, uh, at this age as opposed to when I was in my 30s, but I understand where you're coming from, Corey. Um, I know that, yes, doing the longer tempo runs, progression runs, uh, mal repeats, the longer type intervals that you're talking about, um, it can play on you psychologically, but again, you want to train, mentally train as well. Okay, start visualizing yourself succeeding and prior to doing your train your training sessions and prior to your races. See what you want before it actually happens. You want to train your subconscious mind to do what it is you're training it to do. I always bring up Billy Mills quote. He said it perfectly. He said the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and imagination. So it doesn't if you're a 4-hour marathoner and you want to break a, and you want to run a 250 marathon, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. You know, it's just we, we, we put limitations on ourselves of what we think we are capable of doing or what we're not capable of doing. And a lot of times we place the unneeded stress on ourselves that we just simply do not need to, to, to put on us. So my best recommendation is stay consistent with what you're doing. You're, it sounds like you're doing everything right. You're, you're putting in, you know, harder, shorter intervals. You're doing longer tempo runs. You're doing progression tempos. Um, you're doing those mile repeats. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be challenging. And I know you know this, but you know, like I said, don't don't lose enthusiasm for what you're doing. The best, uh, the world class milers, world class marathoners I've trained with from Kenya and, and Europe, Ethiopia, and, and America. Um, you know, I've I've been very fortunate to to be taken out of my comfort zone several times by Olympians world champions, um, athletes that are ran much faster than I ever ran. So they taught me the importance of just keeping it light, you know, uh, maintain your focus, continue to be consistent in your training, but stay as relaxed as you can. Once you're doing those tempo runs, once you're doing those intervals, those mile repeats, those 200s, 400s on the track, always remember what do I need to do to run as effectively and efficiently as possible? And always keep in mind relaxation. Stay calm, stay cool, get through each, you know, when you're doing that, that training session, that is the only thing that should be on your mind at that particular time. So 
continue to zero in on what you're doing, but at the same time, stay relaxed. Monitor the, the muscular tension that you're feeling in your body. Keep your facial muscles relaxed. And if you continue to train and you continue to develop this tactic in training, you're gonna be that much more prepared when it comes to the race. And when everybody else around you is all stressed out and tense and tight and, and worried and nervous, um, you're gonna be calm, you're gonna be strong, you're gonna be confident. And yeah, you're gonna be nervous. I mean, even the best trained athletes always have, you know, we all have a little bit of, of nerves. I sure I surely had them um, over the years too. Um, but even the morning of the race prior to breaking 220, I was joking around with my teammates um, prior to running 107.06 for the half in Philadelphia. Um, I, I was relaxed. I was, you know, just talking with the athletes on the starting line. But when it got in, once that gun went off, it was all business. Um, in, in in Washington D.C., I ran my my, my personal best of 51.24 open 10 miler, the Cherry Blossom 10 miler. Um, you know, I was just joking around with the Kenyans on the on the start line. But again, once we got in the race. Uh, it was a different ball game. You know, when I ran uh, 107.06 for the half in Philadelphia, I hit the 10 mile mark in that race in 50.54. I hope this video is helpful for you in terms of just knowing how to improve your mental toughness in running and how to get through those really hard, longer type of workouts. Um, always keep your goals in mind, even when you're out there by yourself or if you're in, with a group, always remind yourself what you're training to do. You're obviously going after some very tough goals uh, based on your question. I already know you're highly accomplished and, and you're going after some great things in the sport. So I hope this answers your question, Corey. Uh, definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon if you're new to the channel. Give me a like if you can, share this video, and check out our resources below all of the Run Dream Achieve videos here on the channel or in the pinned comment below. So I hope this video is helpful for you, Corey. I wish you all the best. Keep me posted on your training, and I will talk to you and everyone else in the next video.